Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always there. The Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was asked by his companions. There were a group of people that came from a place called Yemen. They said to him, we have come to ask you about some questions about the deen, religion. And they asked him, before the creation of all this, before the heavens and the earth, what was there? This hadith is in Bukhari. And he said, there was always Allah. He is the beginning and He is the end. Allah does not give birth nor is He fathered by anyone. He is not created but He creates. And His throne was upon water. They said, and then what? He said, then He created the pen. And He said to the pen, write. And the pen said, what should I write? Allah said, write everything that will be. And the pen began to write everything that will be in existence within the known universe. And whatever is unknown, of course. So the universe and the earth. My brothers and sisters in Islam, there has to be a beginning. It's impossible that we are here without an original beginning. And you cannot ask what was there before the beginning. Is that linguistically correct? Replace it, the beginning, with a name whom, which is presented to us in the Qur'an and in all the other Bibles, the holy books of the past. He is Allah, the Creator, the God, worthy of worship. And there is nothing like unto Him. Allah was always there. Allah's name is Al-Khaliq the Creator. We do not reject or affirm that there were creations before us other than the jinns and the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, He is always creating whatever He wills. Allah is now creating whatever He wills. Every day Allah is doing something new. And He creates, not created, He creates always things you do not know and cannot perceive. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it says that his throne was on water. So there was Allah and then he created his throne. Then Allah made the throne be. Allah says in the Quran, how does he make things be? When Allah wants something to exist, all he says is be. And it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, created the throne. Created. Then, and he said, Then the water was created. And from water everything became living. As for the pen, we don't know what the pen looks like, it's just called the pen. We just, these, are, these are words we made up, pen, something that writes, something that records. He said, write everything that will be in the book of decree. Everything that will ever be, everything that will ever exist, everything that will happen is already written from the beginning. And the angels carry out orders from that book of Qadr and they implement certain commands on earth. This is something that's only known to Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the pen to write things that will be measure. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth was after the pen. He made the universe and the earth created in such a way that it is like a clockwork. A lot of people ask about the verse in the Quran. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say he created the heavens and the earth in six days? Can't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create the heavens and the earth in a second? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create the heavens and the earth in six days because that's how long it took him. He's telling us I created the world in six days because Allah is telling us in a miqdar. He deliberately created the universe and the earth to work in a clockwork, in a measurement. So that things can live on it according to that measurement. And that measurement requires that time had to be put in place. He put certain things and made them react to other things in accordance to time. In science they talk about uh, black matter in space. And they say this black matter we cannot explain. The energy in black matter is so minute that they thought how can it make anything? Yet it is a time and the universe is expanding at a rate of tremendous rate. Only Allah knows how fast it's, it's expanding. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it in such a way that it 
as time, the way it works. So six days, because he created everything to work in a time format. Allah created the heavens and the earth. Only Allah knows how long ago. It said that the pen was created 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created creatures and bacteria and uh, light and the sun and the moon, all that stuff. And He created life forms. As I told you, we don't know how many life forms Allah created. There could be hundreds of life forms before us. And Allah knows. The apes were certainly before us. The animals were certainly before us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He created the heavens and the earth. And He put upon it, on, but on the top of it, from every type of walking creature. Dinosaurs, uh, animals that became extinct, all that. And Allah what creatures He created. All we know are two that are mentioned in the Quran. And the Sunnah, and they are the angels first, and then the jinns. It's only in the Sahih Hadith, several Hadiths, the Bukhari and Muslim and others, that the Prophet ﷺ told us the angels are created from light. And Allah tells us in the Quran He created the jinns, another life form, an element of fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the angels created, and the angels don't disobey Allah in anything. They don't have desires. Like the humans. They have wings. Uh, we cannot see them. They can transform. They don't disobey Allah in anything. And the jinns were created after them. The jinns have desires. They give birth to each other. They do all of that stuff. And they existed on earth before the humans. According to the Islamic teachings. And in accordance to ancient teachings of other religions. This is evidence that prophets and messengers existed way before. Because they taught the same thing. With a few differences of laws, that's all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the jinns. They corrupted on earth. Of course, jinns, there are Muslims and non-Muslims among them. There are evil and there are good. Except their nature is a little bit different in the way they're created. And their thought process and what they can do and not do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, describing jinn, some of them they slither, some of them are snakes, some of them are types of dogs, uh, some of them swim, some of them fly. All these different types of jinns. I don't want you to confuse jinn with shaitan. The word shaitan applies to both jinn and human beings and any event that has a conscious being behind it. So a human being, when they act out in evil, deliberately, we call that person, at that moment, a shaitan. And the jinns did a lot of evil, and the jinn, Iblis, the king of the jinns, Allah called him shaitan. And that's why we just say shaitan. Shaitan means that evil jinn, this devil thing that goes around. But the word shaitan applies to any creature that consciously and deliberately acts out in something evil. However, we apply it to the jinns because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Iblis the shaitan. Because he did the, one of the worst evil acts. We'll find out soon, inshallah. Jinns are weaker than human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had honored the human being. We have honored the son of Adam. The jinns corrupted, they fought each other, they shed blood, and the angels were watching all this time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them one day, And behold, or remember, or recall, when your Lord said to the angels, I am about to make upon this earth Khalifa. Khalifa means those who will be custodians after each other, generation after generation, taking from each other the trust and custodians of the earth. It means two things. Creatures that reproduce and replace each other. And it also means honorable ones who are going to be given a trust 
to uphold, custodians. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this universe in a system that can never be changed. An order that cannot be changed. So the angels, what did they say to him? They said, 